He can say it's by coincidence. It's never happened to me before. 20, 26 years almost of preaching. Never had this had never happened. My whole life never had this happen like this. And I'm, I'm about done. And when I when I got done talking to her, there's a guy that was in a cubicle. Of course, I can't see the guy. He's right over, you know, you know how cubicles are. But he's right, I can hear everything they say. He's right over here. And this is right after I got through talking to this girl. And he's just in the cubicle talking to this guy. And here's kind of what he said, which almost represented a lot in what I just talked about. To me, it was a sign from God. God heard everything I talked about. And the man said, well, we can't do nothing with this man until he gets out of here. He said, you know, he said, I listened to everything he said. He said, yeah, we can't do nothing with this man until we get him out of here. We can't, or he can't do nothing with this place until we get out of here because of this man. Something like that. But that's, what I, that's what I got out of it from God. Going to be a, there's going to be a removal. Every kid. There's going to be babies in the wombs. Their moms aren't going to be ready. Those babies are going to be taken. I believe that. They're going to be all, all young people. Not at the age of accountability. are going to be taken. Thank God Almighty has given us time. This garment shows us the escape. This is almost done. The garment shows us the escape. There was no other way of escape. There was nobody else in the world. There was nobody else in the universe that could help this person, this high priest, even though he was the high priest. And it didn't matter that he had a title. That wasn't going to, that's not going to get you home. That's, and you know, there's going to be a lot of preachers in the pulpit of America that aren't going to be ready when the Lord comes. But there's going to be a lot of people that love him that are going to be ready, and that's you and I, because God wants us to know tonight that he's made a way of escape, and it's through the branch. The branch is the way of escape. Amen, through his blood, through his covenant, through his promises, through his word. But the key is you've got, listen to me, to repent. There'll be people on that day, and they'll say, Lord, they'll, 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 they'll want to die. The Bible said that he'll take, actually, during that fixed time, people will actually try to kill themselves, and they can't die. He'll take death from the earth. It's in the Scripture. You say, is that in our preacher? Sure is. There'll be people that should be dead, but they won't, they can't, they won't, he won't, he won't let them die. Some of them will probably try to shoot themselves, but they won't die. Try to bang their heads against the wall. People that will know, people that had a knowledge of God but weren't ready, the one, those will be the ones that will be the worst ones. I, I wouldn't want to die too if I missed. I wouldn't want to live because I know what's coming. But here's the greatest part of it. Two more things, I'm done. But the time was now. This is the greatest point of this message. It took place now. Do you, understand, do you see that in this? It didn't take place later. It took place right in front of his eyesight. He watched it unfold right in front of him. My God, this is a word to the church. It's taking place now. And you know, I remember a, a preacher got up the other night and he was talking about preaching. And, and, he, and the Lord told him, he said, you know, you tell them that I'm coming. If they were here, fine. If they don't, fine. He said, you still warn them from my mouth. The time is now. The happening, God said, is now. Well, bless God, he yanked that garment off of him. And don't you know what will happen the minute that you and I go off out of this world? Don't you know that immediately, now, in, in, in just a moment, this is my last part, they go together, in, in this time frame that you will be changed, that when you go up, you will, be, go, you will come into a glorified body and you're going to have on white, every single one of us are going to have on a white garment. Every one of us. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Amen. The devil can point his finger all he wants. He's doing everything he can to try to explain. He's going to try to explain this away, this event. He's working every, every, every way he can, even right now in, in, in the time that you and I live, to try to discredit what's getting ready to take place with the church. There have been too many people, Ivor. There's been too many people, children, in this last little bit. And one of the things, you know, God spoke to this one girl about, I mean, I'm telling you, man, 
that, you know, that talked about in the last days that there would be these people, they call them scoffers. You, I've met them. Oh, but I don't know about all that stuff. No different in our day, even in the church. And there would actually be people that would be left because by their own words they were condemned. By their own words they were not justified. Do you notice one thing about Joshua in this particular passage of Scripture? He, he really never opened his mouth, did he? You don't have to open your mouth. It's better just to keep your mouth shut and let Jesus speak for you. Amen. That's the best thing to do. You don't have to open your mouth. Explain anything that you've done. All you've got to do is say, Lord, you're always right. And this hard to do and say, Lord, I'm always wrong. And just make it right with God. See, I told you the other day that God showed me that we're running out of road. That, that every day, you know, today I thought he might come. Weird stuff went on in Knoxville. There's a lot of devils in Knoxville, man. Weird stuff went on in Knoxville today. Weird happenings all day long. This is the best I've felt in about 15 hours right now. I've been under just such an attack since early in the morning. However long ago it was since I woke up till now, how many hours has it been? But I knew that once I got in the pulpit and I got in the presence of God with you people, hallelujah, we started worshiping God. I knew I'd start feeling better. I knew I'd be strengthened again. Satan was accusing that Jesus rebuked him. And he'll try to do everything he can to stop everybody he can from making in this rapture. The last thing that I want to say and the most important part about this whole message is this, is I want to encourage you. All I want to do is encourage you and tell you is guard your heart. Guard your life. Every day I want you to get up. I want to encourage you. I was telling Jesse and some of you others about you know taking communion, but every day I get up, I put on the whole armor of God. I dress up in armor. People say, why do you do that? That's kind of weird, preacher. Well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But I put it on because the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. He said, then you'll be able to stand. Amen. And having done all standing, he said, you have to have the whole armor on in order to stand in the evil day. This is the evil day. So if he told me to do it, it don't matter what anybody thinks. I could care less what anybody thinks. I'm going to do what his word says by faith. You say, you really, yeah. And I get up every morning, I say, Lord, I put my, I said, my feet are shot. I'm talking to all of you. Just try it. And there'll be a different, the, say, my feet are shot. I said, Lord, my loins are girded about with truth, which means the loins of your mind. You know, if, if attacks will come against your mind, you cast them down. Because attacks will come against your mind. You know what I'm talking about? Then he said, Lord, I'm putting on the breastplate of righteousness. This big breastplate, guard my heart. Lord, I'm taking the shield of faith. And that shield ain't some little field. That shield, one of them great big ones you can get behind, and them arrows, them archers try to hit you, and, and you got the shield anointed, and them arrows just go right through and, and just stop, and it won't touch you. And then I'll take the sword. That's what we're doing tonight. The word. Take that word. That's how you fight the enemy. The devil started talking the other day, and I just told him to shut up and get away. I said, everything you say is a lie. Go on, get away! Leave me alone in Jesus' name. I'm going to go down. I saw, so I went downstairs and started praising God. And he's gone, man. I didn't give him any time to even speak. Trying to mess my mind. Get out you liar. Go. And that's the last part. You put on the helmet of salvation. Every day. It's got to be a habit. It's got to become a, a mindset. Some of y'all look at me like, man, you crazy preacher. I might be a little bit crazy, but I'm still going to put on the armor of God. And I'm going to stand. If I didn't put it on, I didn't take communion. I mean, you know, I have bad days. I just want it to be like if, you know, somebody one time said to me, said, well, preacher, said, I prayed, and nothing really happened. You know, I told him, I said, well, just think what would happen if you wouldn't have prayed. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what you do. You come back and say, hey, what would happen, what would happen if you wouldn't have prayed? George, you're going to get better. Not because I pray, the church prays, because God said lay hands on them, believe by faith, and you're getting better. You're being healed from this moment. I believe it. I, I, I speak it forth. So my last point is guard against that day. You know what, what that means? The five virgins that were ready, they guarded against that day. Can I preach just a little bit longer? I'm going to anyway. They guarded against that day. Because let me tell you something, darlings in here. I love every one of you. They didn't just only have oil. 
They had extra oil. They were guarded against. That's mine. They said, can we have it? Nope, that's mine. Go get your own. You know what that means? Let's seek them. Let, let, let's make sure our life is ready. Let's make sure that we're filled up with the things of God and not the things of the, of the world. They didn't hesitate when they said, uh-uh, uh-uh, go get it yourself. That's what they told them, and that's what I'll tell you too. Uh-uh, that's mine, you better go get yours. You better guard against that day. They not only had oil, they had extra oil. They were ready. God has given us time right now to prepare. So preacher, can't I have one of these? Uh-uh, you sure can't. Never mind. You get your own. You understand what I'm saying? You go seek him. You'll find him. The main thing is it's time to stand your feet. It's time. And God wants to make a change in the church's life, in your life, in my life. Look at me, everybody up here. It's time for a change of garment. Isn't that good? Isn't God good? And the greatest thing about him is, is that he's not mad at nobody. He's telling us, I want everybody to be ready. I love my people. And he's not. He's not waiting on anything except one thing, the most important, valuable thing to him is waiting on you and me. In the scripture, he said they were all virgins. They were all mine. Every single one of them were mine. But the rapture says one only two made it. That's why there was five out of ten. One was in the field and made it. One was in the bed and made it. One was grinding at the mill and made it. Five were five. Or five for five, that's right. Five were wise. And five were foolish. You know why? I just told you. It comes right down to it. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee. Zip code 377 Four, two. Emails may be addressed to nbwc mailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.